By the end of this video, you will learn 50 very common words and phrases in Italian that you can use when you're meeting or greeting someone. This video is aimed at total beginners, so if you're new to Italian, this video is just right for you. So let's get started. Firstly, how do we say yes and no in Italian? Si, yes, si, and no, it's the same, but be careful about the pronunciation. It's no, no, si and no. Ciao, 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 what do you think that means? Ciao, that means hey, hello. It's a word that you can use to greet someone anytime during the day. So it doesn't have to be morning, noon or evening. Ciao, buongiorno, buongiorno. Giorno means day in Italian, giorno. Pronunciation is very important in language learning, right? So it's not giorno. I know that most of English speaking people tend to pronounce this word like giorno. Okay, but it's not like that. The right pronunciation is giorno, giorno. Look at the first part of the phrase. Buon, buon, buongiorno, buongiorno, buono, buono, buona means good in Italian. If buono, buona means good and giorno means day, buongiorno should mean good day or good morning. So the time of the day is important for this phrase. It's the early hours of the day and you see someone and you want to greet them and you say buongiorno. There is also another word which is buona giornata. It's basically the same, but just the structure of the phrase is a bit different. Buona giornata. And that means good day. And it is a phrase that you use when you have to leave. It's morning time, you see someone, you want to say hi, good morning, ciao, buongiorno. And you had your conversation, you said whatever you needed to say, and then you are leaving. Then you say buona giornata, it's like have a good one, good day, all right? Buona giornata, buona sera. So we already learned what that word means, right? So buona, buono, that means good. And sera, sera means evening. Buona sera should mean good evening, right? It's the same thing. We have two versions of this phrase. One of them is buona sera, good evening. And the other one is buona serata, it's when you're leaving. Have a good evening, have a good one, buona serata. Grazie, grazie, grazie means thank you, thank you, grazie. And like, if we want to say thanks so much, thank you very much, then we need to say grazie mille. Or also, you can also say grazie tante, oppure grazie di cuore. It's like thanking you from my heart. Grazie di cuore, grazie mille. Mille, that means thousand in Italian. Grazie mille is more like I'm thanking you thousand times. So grazie, Thank you, grazie, grazie mille, thank you very much. Per favore, per favore. What do you think I'm saying right now? Per favore, per favore, please. So for English speaking people, I think that Italian is, is an easy language to learn, okay? But you need to know where to look. Per favore, so per means for. It's a preposition in Italian. Favore, you already know that word, it means favor, okay? So it is like doing favor to someone. It is like asking, could you do me a favor? Okay, so in Italian, to say please, we say per favore. Actually, there is another word, another stronger word to say please, but it's, it doesn't mean please, it is like it is like, I beg you, like you want something so much and saying please isn't really enough, okay? Then you say, ti prego, like I beg you. Pregare in Italian means to pray, okay? So it sounds almost the same in English, like pray, pregare. No, it doesn't. <laughs> ti prego means I beg you, like you want something so much and you are begging for it. Imagine that you're in Italy, 
There is an Italian person talking to us and you don't understand anything. What are you going to say? I don't understand. Non capisco. Non capisco. Non capisco. I don't understand. Try to understand how Italian works. Non is the word particle that we use to make sentences negative. So, if I take it out, capisco remains alone. In that case, that means I do understand. I understand. Okay? Capisco. I understand. Non capisco. I don't understand. It's easy, isn't it? Capisco. Yes, I, I understand. Non capisco. I don't understand. Moving on. Non parlo l'italiano. Parlo l'italiano means I speak Italian. So if I put non at the beginning of the sentence, then it means I don't speak Italian. We are having this weird conversation where we don't understand anything. So I say, non capisco, non parlo l'italiano. I don't understand. I don't speak Italian. Since we want to be really kind, so I want to add another phrase at the beginning of this conversation, which is Mi dispiace, mi dispiace, non capisco, io non parlo l'italiano. Okay, focus and try to understand what I'm saying right now. Mi dispiace, mi dispiace, io non capisco, non capisco. Non parlo l'italiano. Okay? Look, try to repeat with me. Mi dispiace. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Mi dispiace. Non capisco. I don't understand. Mi dispiace. I am sorry. You say that you don't speak Italian, that you don't understand, so what are you going to do? We have to have a conversation here. So you're gonna ask if they speak English, right? So you say, Parli l'inglese. Parli l'inglese. Do you speak English? Parli l'inglese. Do you speak English? Be careful about how I am using the intonation. Parli l'inglese. So it is going higher towards the end of the phrase. Parli l'inglese. If you get rid of this question mark and when you change your intonation, this sentence is going to mean do you speak English? You do speak English. Parli l'inglese. Parli l'inglese. You speak English. Okay. So this is how we make questions in Italian. It is with intonation. So it is a question, then you will pronounce it this way. Parli l'inglese. All right? <laughs> no, non parlo l'inglese. Okay, because most of Italian people cannot speak English, right? So they would say, non parlo l'inglese. Mi dispiace, mi dispiace, non parlo l'inglese. Maybe you can say, parlo poco l'italiano. I speak a little bit of Italian. Poco, a little, poco. Parlo poco. L'italiano. I speak a little bit of Italian. And now, andiamo avanti. Andiamo avanti. Avanti. Andiamo avanti. Comment down below what you think this sentence means. Andiamo avanti. Può ripetere, per favore? Could you please repeat? This is a very kind sentence. It's formal. A you is the form of you. Because you don't know that person, so we need to be kind. So you say, Può ripetere, per favore? Could you please repeat that? The person repeats, but you still don't understand. You don't want to use the same sentence again and again. And there is another option for you. Come? 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 That means how? Come? How? Italian people use this word to say, come again? So you asked, poi ripetere per favore, could you please repeat? And our super friendly amico Mario keeps speaking and they speak really quickly. Lei esce dall'albergo, poi va dritto fino al terzo incrocio, poi gira a destra, va dritto fino a un semaforo, poi gira a sinistra. You need to stop Mario, okay? You can use this word to stop him. You can say, come? I, what? How? Come again? Like, that means, I, that means that you didn't understand what he said. 
Maybe you could understand a part of what he said, but there's a specific word that you really don't know its meaning. So you want to ask, Che significa sinistra? Che significa sinistra? Che significa means what does it mean? Che significa? Che in Italian means what? Okay, like in Spanish. Che significa? Che significa? What does it mean? And then you can add a specific word that you want to know the meaning of. Scusi, scusi, scusi. Excuse me, excuse me. Una domanda. Una, una, una domanda. Domanda means question in Italian. Scusi, eh, una domanda. Che significa? You can even show the word that you're trying to read. You have a leaflet in your hand. You really need to know the meaning of one particular word that you have there. And you can ask, Scusi, excuse me, una domanda, one question for you, una domanda. Eh, che significa questo? Questo, questa. Questo means this in English. Eh, scusi, una domanda. Eh, che significa questo? Che significa questo? What does this mean? What does it mean? Come ti chiami? Come ti chiami. That means what's your name? Come ti chiami? You already know this word, right? Come. Come. How? Come ti you chiami? Chiamare that verb means to call someone. Calling by phone or calling their name. Literally that sentence means how do you call yourself? What name did you pick for yourself? How do you call yourself? What is your name? How are we going to answer? Mi chiamo and your name. Mi chiamo Arda. Mi chiamo Arda. I call myself Arda. Come ti chiami? What's your name? Mi chiamo Arda. My name's Arda. Di dove sei? Di dove sei? Di dove sei? Dove? Dove? That means where. Sei. It is the word to be in English. Okay. And yes, we do have verb conjugation in Italian as well. So sei is like saying you are. Okay. Sei. Dove? Where? Where you are. Di is a preposition and it means from. Dove? Where? Di? From? And say is the word to be. You are. Where are you from? Di dove sei? Where are you from? Sono. It's still the word to be. Okay. Sono inglese. I'm English. Sono americano. Super quick tip. In Italian, adjectives change their terminations according to gender and the number of the noun that it modifies. So if you're a guy, you need to say sono americano, okay? It's a sono americano, okay? It's sono americano, sono americano. And if you're a female, then you need to say sono americana. This rule affects only the adjectives ending with O, all right? So the adjectives Ending with E doesn't really have to change according to the gender. Come stai means how are you, okay? How are you? Come stai? And how do we answer? Sto bene, sto bene, I'm good, I'm well. Sto bene, sto male, I'm bad. Well, in English, you don't say I'm bad, you say I'm not okay, etc. But in, in Italian, you can say Sto male. And you want to ask them the same question. E tu? E tu? Come stai? And you? E tu? Come stai? Molto bene. Molto bene. Very good. Molto bene. Or molto male. Molto male. Too bad. Not good at all. 
instead of saying molto bene, you can also say benissimo. Benissimo. But be careful about pronunciation. It's not benissimo. Correct pronunciation. Benissimo. The same thing for male. Molto male. Malissimo. Malissimo. Come stai? Malissimo. I'm not good at all. There is another way of asking how the person is doing. Come va? That means, how is it going? Come va? And the answer is, va bene, va bene. It's going pretty well. Or, va male, va male. It's not going well, okay? Same thing, va bene, it's going well. Non va bene, it's not going well. Come va? Va benissimo, benissimo. It's not going well at all. Va malissimo. Amici miei, va malissimo. So that's all for today. See you next lesson. Alla prossima! Arrivederci!